elementary introduction to the Wolfram language. Lesson 3. First look at lists. In this lesson, we will be learning about one of Mathematica's key concepts, lists. A quick definition of a list is that it is pretty much a basic way to store information in Mathematica. Lists are always comprised of elements surrounded by curly brackets. Here is a list. If you learned about sets in math class, note that there are two key differences between sets and lists. First of all, sets cannot repeat elements, but lists can. Second, in a set, the order does not matter, but in a list, it does. Here are some functions that return lists. This is range. Range is so useful because it returns almost every kind of ordered list of numbers. Here I will use range to generate a list that goes from 1 to 10. So here I'm going to type range of 10, hit shift enter, and I get a list that goes from 1 to 10. Here I will use range to generate a list that goes from 5 to 10. So I'll just type range of 5 comma 10, hit shift enter, and I get that list. Here I will use range to generate a list that goes from 3 to 21 in steps of 2. I'll do range of 3 comma 21 comma 2, hit shift enter, and I get the correct list. Here I will use range to generate a list that goes from 10 to 1 in steps of negative 1. So I'll just type range of 10 comma 1 comma negative 1, and I'll get the right list. Please note that the third argument is negative 1 because the default increment is positive 1. Here's what would have happened without the negative 1. I would type range of 10 comma 1, hit shift enter, and as you can see, the list is empty. It returned an empty list because it is going from 10 to 1 in steps of positive 1. Because 1 is less than 10 though, it just assumes that the list is finished being made. The next function that we will discuss is reverse. Reverse is exactly what it sounds like and returns the list that is inputted with the order reversed. So here I'll do reverse of this list and then it returns the reversed list. You can also wrap reverse around other functions that return lists. Here I'll do range of 10 and then I'll wrap it in reverse and it gives the reversed order of range of 10. Here I'll do range of 14, 28, 2, then I'll wrap it in reverse, and as you can see, it also reverses that list. Another key function that returns a list is join. Join takes in lists as arguments and joins them together. So here I'll do join of three different lists, and as you can see, it merges them all into one. Now that you have learned a little bit about lists and functions that return them, I will introduce you to an awesome function having to do with lists. List plot allows you to see lists on the two-dimensional plane. Here I'll do list plot of this list, hit shift enter, and I get all the numbers within the list plotted on the coordinate plane. Here I'll do range of 10, hit shift enter, and I get the numbers ranging from 1 to 10. Then I'll wrap it in list plot, and I get a straight line of points. Here I'll do range of 10, 1, 1, negative 1, hit shift enter, and I get the numbers ranging from 10 to 1. Then I'll wrap it in list plot and I get the exact opposite of the line before. It's the same thing but going down. Here I'll do range of 10, then I'll wrap that in reverse, then I'll wrap that in list plot. When I hit shift enter, I get the same exact list plot as before because the lists are the same thing despite being made differently. Here I'll do join of range of 10, comma range of 15, and comma range of 20. Then I'll wrap that in list plot, hit shift enter, and I get an awesome graphic. Here are some more cool functions having to do with lists. Divisors takes in a number and returns a list of that number's divisors. So here I'll type divisors of 360, and then I get all of 360's divisors. Then, if I want to know how many divisors 360 has, I can use the function called length, which tells me the number of elements within a list. So here I'll type divisors of 360, then I'll wrap that in length, and then I hit shift enter and I get 24. If I wanted to know the sum of the divisors of 360, I would use the function called total. So I'll do divisors of 360, then I'll wrap that in total, and I get 1170. Another fairly intuitive function is sort. Sort just sorts the elements of a list. So here I'll do sort of this list, hit shift enter, and I get the numbers sorted numerically. The function take takes the first n elements of a list. So I'll do range of 10, and then I'll make it take of range of 10, comma 4. I'll hit shift enter, and I get the first four numbers in range of 10. Here, I'll start off with range of 10 again, and then I'll make it take of range of 10, comma negative 4. What this does is it takes four elements from the end of the list. So 
we got the four last elements in range of 10. The function drop is the same as take, but it drops elements rather than taking them. So here I'll start off again with range of 10, then I'll make it drop of range of 10, comma 4. This drops the first four elements and keeps the last six. Here I'll do range of 10, and then I'll make it drop of range of 10, comma negative 4. This drops the last four elements and keeps the first six. The function part takes the nth element of a list. So here I'll do range of 10, and then I'll make it part of range of 10, comma 4, which returns the fourth element, 4. Here I'll do part of this list, comma 7, hit shift enter, and it returns 2, because 2 is the seventh element of that list. I hope you now have a deeper understanding of lists. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.